So my name is George Barbastathis. I'm a professor in the mechanical engineering department at MIT. And I also hold a pretty significant involvement in the Smart Center, Singapore MIT Alliance for Research and Technology. Computing has become, over the decades, much cheaper and much more widely available than it used to be when I was a student. I'm old enough to remember the days when computers were kind of exotic things, right? Uh, if you had one, uh, you were very lucky. And um, at the same time, uh, optics in general, including microscopy, cameras, all of these things became better. And it became a little bit of a competition between uh, people who do optical hardware and people who do computing. How can you put the two together in order to get even better images? You can do it by making better hardware. You can do it by leaving the hardware alone and adding more computation. So that is always a very interesting topic because it includes uh, mathematics and it includes physics. And of course the applications are great because uh, imaging is everywhere, you know, from uh, inspection in uh, manufacturing tools, from medicine, obviously, uh, diagnosing disease, uh, fundamental science, uh, cosmology, you know, you need to get images of stars. So it's simultaneously a very, very broad topic, very broad applications. And a lot of interest in science, a lot of, inter a lot of interest in science on its own, on the imaging side, the mathematics of it and the physics of it are very interesting. So this has always attracted me and, and um, more recently, over the last decade, somehow computation became more dominant in my work uh, and uh, more and more and more dominant and, uh, and um, uh, yeah, that's where we are, where uh, sort of uh, a, a lot of what we do has to do with imaging systems that cannot on their own produce very good images and we rely on computation to make the images better. And in fact, many of the mathematical methods used in uh, machine learning actually originated in imaging uh, science, believe it or not, in the 1960s uh, or so. Uh, uh, there's also a, an interesting distinction uh, when it comes to the combination of the two, imaging and computing. One class of that work, I would call it machine vision, which basically takes the camera for granted and then the job of the computer is to interpret the image, right? It's very big these days, it's in everyday life. Computers can recognize faces, uh, you know, objects in general, very, very powerful. The other type of imaging that I'm more involved in is a little bit different. In this case, we cannot take the image for granted. In fact, we know for sure that the imaging system is somehow limited. For example, maybe the environment is very dark. And uh, if you try whether you are a human looking at a dark picture or if you're an algorithm, computer vision, you cannot make it, right? Because, because the image is just uh, damaged. So this is where we come in. We use machine learning, interestingly and weirdly enough, perhaps, we use machine learning in that context. So the job of the AI is to improve the image, not to interpret it. There's a lot of relationships, obviously, right? Because if you can do one, perhaps you can also do the other, and there's also ways to do both of them together. But certainly there is a demand for the improvement of images that machine learning, uh, that the machine vision, I'm sorry, that machine vision cannot provide, right? So, so we try to focus on that area because, in my opinion, it is um, it's very important and a lot of need for improvements there. And to give you an idea, if you want to, to, to do inspection of integrated circuits, of course integrated circuits are ubiquitous and it's very important to, for the various manufacturers to inspect. But it's very, very difficult to see what's inside an integrated circuit. The features are incredibly small, right? Incredibly small. Uh, on, um, between the ridges of your fingertip, between the ridges of your fingertip, you can fit maybe a million of the features that are inside the modern integrated circuit. That's how small it is, right? In your whole finger, you can fit billions or uh, trillions. I don't even know the numbers become really super high. Okay, so it's very difficult to look at these small things, right? Uh, and uh, that's where we come in. We have shown using machine learning that you can actually make a map of what's inside the integrated circuit very efficiently and, and very accurately as well. We're collaborating with a government laboratory at Argonne National Lab. This is in Chicago, Illinois. 
Uh, so they have a device called the Synchrotron, which is basically a very sophisticated X-ray source, kind of like an X-ray laser, if you wish. So they have a dedicated uh, line, they put the integrated circuits in that uh, line of the Synchrotron, and then they give us the data and we we'll do the computation. So we do not really do this experiment here. Yeah, the Synchrotron, just to, it sounds like a very fancy name, uh, I believe there's only 16 or 17 of those in the entire world. We have a few of those in the US, there's a few in Japan, a few in Switzerland, that's about it. These are gigantic instruments, you know, it's the size of a football field and, and uh, obviously very expensive to run and maintain. Uh, and uh, it is sort of necessary for this kind of operation.